Hi, we are on balancing equation notes. So this is taking everything we've kind of talked about and putting it into one area. We're going to be reviewing coefficients and subscripts and superscripts and is it balanced and and is it synthesis, is it decomposition, is it replacement, but we're also going to do one more step. We're going to actually balance the equation. And so let's take a quick look here. I have five H2s. That means I've got H2 stuck together. I've got a hydrogen with a hydrogen and I have five of those hydrogens stuck together. That means I have five times two is 10 hydrogens. So what number represents coefficient? Remember the coefficient is this number in front. Um, if I have uh, H2O or H2O2, this is not the same thing. Let me make that a little clearer. H2O. Okay. If I change a subscript, I get a completely different element or chemical compound. It's the same elements, but it's different amounts, different ratios, different, um, a different substance. This is water. This is hydrogen peroxide. You can never ever change a subscript because if you change the subscript, you get a completely different thing. That's a big no, no. So I can change the number. I could have two molecules of hydrogen or I could have two molecules of hydrogen peroxide. So I can change that number in front. And so what represents the coefficient in this case, five, the subscript tells me how many of these hydrogens are stuck together. So two represents that. Remember if it was H with a superscript up higher of like two positive, that would mean it's charge. It's ionic charge. Right now we're just really going to be dealing with how many of them we have. So we're dealing with subscripts and that tells me how many are stuck together. H represents hydrogen and how many hydrogens are there total? It means I have five H2 stuck together. So distributive property says five times two is 10. I have a total of 10 hydrogen molecules. So here's some kind of review cheat sheet stuff. To have a balanced equation, you must have exactly the same number of atoms on each side of the yield sign. So if I have 10 oxygens on the reactant side, I have to have 10 oxygens on the product sign. You can only ever change the coefficient. If you change the subscript, you get a completely different substance. Never, ever, ever change the subscript. Only change the number in front, the coefficient. So, because we don't want to have hydrogen peroxide versus water. One is going to really harm you or even kill you if you drink it, um, where water is going to keep you alive. So that's a big difference. Yield is this handy dandy little arrow. Yield points in the direction the reaction is occurring. My reactants are the things that are going to change. My yield is the chemical action occurring, the chemical change occurring. And my product is what I end up with at the other side. So yield stands for the chemical reaction occurring. It's not like yield as in a stoplight, you know, where you slow down. It's yield like in a farm. I plant this many seeds. My yield is this much more product at the end. What's my yield? So hint, when deciding which side of the equation to change first, usually you want to change the one that has more of them stuck together because the ones that are separated can be changed independently. So uh, on the sheet that I gave you and it, uh, looks like this with this on the back side. So this was this worksheet now on Schoology form. You can follow along, but the one that I did here is actually the bottom one. So I took it a little bit out of order so that we kind of went through the first one, two, and three together. And I did the bottom one is just kind of a review here where I gave you the answer. So as I look at this, um, I tried to balance this so that this equal was under the yield sign, but I forgot when I put the, they make these a lot wider. So I apologize when you get down here, they're not exactly where I wanted them to be, but you're going to get the idea and you're going to be writing this on paper. So what you want to do is write your equation, leaving space in front of them. See, I didn't leave quite enough space there. I should have left a bigger space there. So write this on a piece of paper. And then underneath your yield sign, you're going to put equal signs for however many different elements there are, and you're going to write them on each side. So I've got AL on my reactant side. I've got AL on my product side. I've got oxygen on my reactant side. I've got oxygen on my product side. So how many ALs do I have? Well, if I have a subscript of two, that means I have two aluminums on this side. And over here, I only have one. Is that balanced? No. I have three oxygens on my reactant side, and I have two oxygens on my product side. Again, not balanced, not at all. So remember the hint. Well, I know 
I'm going to have to make both sides bigger at some place. I'm going to have to add more coefficients, the numbers in front of the equation. And it's always better to change this one stuck together because the AL and the O on this side can be changed independently. Now, I can make 2 into 4. Can I ever make an even number into an odd number? No. And I know I need to get this to an even number because this side's even. So the easiest way to make it even is to simply double it. And so, you guys, sometimes this is just trial and error. It's okay to erase. Um, so let's put a 2 coefficient here. Now we need to rebalance. So now I've got 2 times 2 for a 4 aluminums. And I've got 2 times 3 for 6 oxygen. So you see how I crossed out the old number and I put in what I have now? Because now, now that that one on that side is fixed, I think I can balance it on the other side. But I'm going to have to put a coefficient in front of the aluminum and in front of the oxygen. So this is literally how you do the math. What times 1 is 4? If you said 4, congratulations, you just figured out your coefficient for aluminum is 4. 4 times 1 now means I have 4 aluminums. Balanced. Yay. 2 times what is 6? Well, if you said 3, and if I put a 3 here, 3 times 2 gives me 6 aluminums. I am now balanced. I am a happy camper. So 2 Al2O3 yields 4 Al's plus 3 O2's. I have the same amount on each side. Let's try the next one. All right. See, I tried to get that moved over. You should really have those underneath the yield. It just makes it more logical in my brain, but that's how I work. You're yourself. You figure out how you work. Let's count. Two H, so I've got H2, two hydrogens on this side, and I've got to add to that two oxygens. Okay, so far so good until we get to this side. I have two hydrogens, yay, balanced, but I only have one oxygen. Not going to help me. Hmm. Well, remember, I can't make odds even, but I can make evens odd. I can make odds, sorry. I can't make evens odd, but I can make an odd even. And I always said, if we can do it, change the one that's stuck together first. So let's put a two here, because I want to get rid of that odd number. Now I've got two oxygens, and two times two is four four hydrogens. Now my oxygens are balanced. This is good. It's fine. It's happy camper. But my hydrogens still are not balanced. But you see this is by itself so it's much easier to fix. So two times what is four? Well I have a coefficient of two. So two times two is four hydrogen. Four re hydrogens on the reactant side, four hydrogens on the product side. Two oxygens on the reactant side, two oxygens on the product side. I'm balanced. Would you please go ahead and try the next one and pause the video and come back and we'll work through it. Okay, I'm hoping that you actually tried this and that you didn't just, you know, copy answers, but let's try it anyway. Let's see how you did. Uh, by the way, this one, number two, I had two small things and I ended up with one big thing, that is synthesis. I made it bigger. This one, I have two things stuck together. I still have two things stuck together, but I added something else to it, so I broke a chunk off, so that's decomposition. So just quick reminder if you get in your head, because on the test, I'd ask you all three of these things. Is it balanced? Balance it. And what kind of reaction is it? Is it synthesis, decomposition, or replacement? Always double check that in your head. So here's my yield sign. So this is the side I got to make sure it's balanced. I've got two hydrogens and two oxygens. See, my subscripts are the same. I've got two hydrogens. Hey, great. But on this side, I don't. Look, I've got one oxygen here plus two. So I have three oxygens. That is not balanced. And I wish I could just go change this. But since this is bigger than this side, I know I'm going to have to make that bigger. So what am I going to do? Hmm. What did you do? That's the question. Well, I know that I'm going to have to do something with this because I'm going to have to make that oxygen bigger because I can't turn this one into an odd, right? So what am I going to do? Hmm. Well, let's get rid of this odd, okay? Let's make this even. 
I know I, I want you to do this one, but this one's stuck together first. It's changing two things. It's going to change the hydrogen. Let's see how it goes. Now I've got four hydrogens, right? Two times two is four. Two times one is two, plus two more is four oxygens. Hey, this might work out okay. Look, two times what is four? Two times what is four? It's two, right? And that happily, because I put the coefficient in front of that H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, distributes through. So two times two is four hydrogens. Two times two is four oxygens. Deal? Am I balanced? I am. So my new formula, my equation for this, is if I take two atoms of hydrogen peroxide, I can break it down into two molecules of water and one molecule of O2 stuck together. And that is actually what happens in a decomposition. This is a decomposition problem. And this is what happens to your hydrogen peroxide in your medicine cabinet, should you ever have it. It's why we store it in a brown bottle so that it doesn't decompose faster. But eventually it's gonna decompose into water and oxygen. Again, you should not drink old hydrogen peroxide because not enough of it has decomposed to make it safe to drink, but enough of it has decomposed to make it not fizz when it hits something nasty. Number four. All right, we got Na plus O2 yields Na2O. How many have I got here? Well, let's see, I've got one Na and I've got two O's. I've got two Na's on the reactant side, or sorry, on the product side, but I've got one O. All right, which one do I change first? Well, I wanna change the one that's stuck together, so I'm gonna change the product. What times one is two? Two, okay. So now I have two times two or four NAs. Two times one is two oxygens. My oxygens are now fine. I need to fix my sodiums, but the sodium on the reactant side is by itself. So that's fine. I can change it. It's not going to affect the oxygen because that's already okay. So there's a one there. Cause remember I'm, I'm being mean and I wasn't telling you which ones I didn't have to mess with. So I'm making you write a one. We never actually really write the one there, but in this case, we're going to put the one there so that you're just remembering that that's what it is. That's what my coefficient is. We just don't write one times like A. It's implied that it's one A. So one times what is four? Four. So in this case, my Na is four, my O is one, and my Na2O is two. If you want to see that a little clearer, let's get rid of this stuff. And there is my completed balanced equation. And this is two small things making one bigger thing, so that is synthesis. Try this one on your own. Pause it, come back for number five, please. Did you pause it? Come pause it. All right, hopefully you did. Let's take a look. We've got nitrogen and hydrogen. Subscripts of two on both of these, so I have two nitrogens and two hydrogens. I, on my product side, only have one nitrogen, but I have three hydrogens here. All right. Well, let's fix the nitrogen because it's the one that stuck with the hydrogen, and that's going to affect that one. And we know we're going to want to make that even because I've got an even one on the other side, it just so happens that this probably is going to be pretty simple. So let's look at this. What times one is two? Two. Now I've got two times one, so I've got two nitrogens. Fixed. Sweet. Two times three, however, is six hydrogens. But the great news is I just have a one there because remember, I don't have to fix the nitrogen. It's already balanced, but I do need to fix the hydrogen. And the hydrogen is two times what is six? Well, if you said three, congratulations. So I have one nitrogen that I have, one and two that I have to change, but I need three H2s to yield me two molecules of H2, three. Let's see that done. Now, also, I want you to think in your head. Is this synthesis, decomposition, or replacement? I have two, and I have an N2 plus an H2. That is two separate elements on the reactant side, separated by a plus sign. But on my yield sign, my my 
product sign, I have two elements stuck together, so I made it bigger. So this would again be synthesis. Next, I have P4 plus O2 yields P4O10. Okay, let's try her. You should pause, come back and check your work. Did you pause? I hope you did. Please don't cheat. Try it. I have a subscript of four, so I have four P's. I have four P's over here. Four phosphoruses on both sides. I only have two oxygens on this side, but I have ten over here. Hey, the cool news is this. One, you should have already processed that this is a synthesis because I've got two things added together and one thing stuck together. I made it bigger molecules. Synthesis. But this is like the easiest one to change if you didn't already figure that out because my phosphoruses are the same on both sides and the oxygen on the left side can be balanced on the right side with just changing one handy dandy number. This doesn't change. This doesn't change. What times two is ten? Five. So, didn't have to change the phosphorus. Had to change the oxygen to five of those O2s. Didn't have to change that. Let's double check ourselves. Are we balanced? Well, one times 10 is 10. Five times two is 10. I'm balanced. I'm happy. I'm good. I had to change one thing. So again, this is where if we're in work time, whether you're digital or we're watching this in class and you need help, if it's digital, obviously you should be zooming to get help. If it isn't, you should be contacting me in class. Either way, if this doesn't make sense, you need to have me help you. Seven looks like a big scary one because I've got three different things. Let's look and see what kind of equation this is. I've got one thing plus two stuck together. I've got two stuck together plus one thing. I didn't make it bigger. I didn't make it smaller. I simply rearranged. So it's replacement. Let's count. One iron. Let's go over here and make it interesting. Three irons. Okay, we are not balanced. H2, two hydrogens. Over here, H2, two hydrogens. Hey, those are good so far. One oxygen, uh-oh, four oxygens. Again, now we're gonna go through this, and this one, it's okay if you get it wrong. That's what erasers are for. You can do this as many times. It's okay if you get it wrong, back up, try it again. We want to go with the least common multiple. So if you could go through and divide that whole thing by two, you might you probably have to cut it in half. I'm just saying that. Pause. Try this scary looking one. It's not as scary as you think it is, okay? But I want you to try it. Come back and I'll work through it with you. Okay, hopefully you paused. Okay, I know this Effie looks scary because it's odd but look over here I could put a three in front of it and fix that right now I'm not normally start with that one I'm gonna come back to it but I'm just saying it is okay to have an odd coefficient if you need be so let's look and see where we do need to start working well my hydrogen's okay I could change that it's this nasty little oxygen that I know I'm gonna have to change so let's change it on the reactant side first because it makes the most sense to start there because I can fix this one independently, but this one this one changes two things. So what times one is four? It's four, right? But now I've got eight hydrogens, and now, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> it's so late, I should be doing this at home. I shouldn't be doing this this late. Let's see, I still have eight, but I wrote on the wrong side. But now I've got four times one is four oxygens. My oxygens are happy my hydrogens are no longer happy. So what times two is eight? Four. But look, this one's by itself. So if I put a four there, four times two is eight. That's now balanced. What do I have left to do? Well, what times one is three? Three, it's okay to have an odd one because that makes me have three irons. Three irons on both sides, eight hydrogens on both sides, four oxygens on both sides. It's implied there's a one there. So. When I filled this out, I have three irons plus four molecules of water yields me one iron oxide, one F3O4, plus 
four hydrogens stuck together. And that would be my answer. Let's make it look a little prettier so you can see that. And again, this is replacement. I rearranged. Okay, we're getting to the end. We've only got, I think, three to go. Try it on your own. Before you get there, if you haven't done it, look, I've got one by itself plus another thing by itself stuck together. That is synthesis. We have one carbon on the product side, the reactant side. I've got one carbon on the hydrogen side. On the product side, I've got four hydrogens, one carbon. But I've only got two there. Try it, come back. Okay, look, this is stuck together. This is bigger than this side. I can change these independently. My carbons are fine. It's my hydrogens that are messed up. So two times what is four? So if I put a two there, I am balanced. That's all I had to do. It's implied there's one there. It's implied there's one there. Go and fill this in. And I have one carbon, two molecules of H2, yields one molecule of C. H4. And that would be your answer for number eight. All right, this one looks scary. Try it. I'll go through this first part with you and make sure you have your count right because this one is much simpler than you think it is. So please stop panicking. First of all, synthesis, replacement, or decomposition. One, two, three things stuck together plus two stuck together. One, two, three things stuck together, plus two stuck together. It's rearrangement. I haven't made anything bigger. I haven't made anything smaller. I have Na2, so I've got two sodiums, nothing to add to it. I've got one sulfur. I've got four, oops, I forgot my O there. I'll put that in. I will fix that before you guys get to this. I have four oxygens. I have one calcium. And I have two chlorines. Okay, on this side, I have one calcium. That's okay. I have one sulfur. I have four oxygens. Okay, that's okay too. But I've only got one Na and I have one chlorine. Hmm. Well, NaCl, salt, two here to one, two to one. What if I just put a two there? Now I've got two NAs and two CLs, and I'm balanced. That looked scary, but it really wasn't that bad. The point is when you're doing this, use this counting method and make your life simpler. This becomes really like, oh, you know, like, uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, it's really not as bad if you break it down into the little bitty steps. So it's implied there's a one there and a one there and a one there. So this really scary one was just one coefficient that I had to change. It's one, 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 and two. So let's look at that. Oh, I thought I hit the eraser. And there's your balanced equation. You're so close to being done. Number 10, try it. Please pause. I will come back and work the whole thing out, but try this one completely on your own. And this one is a little more picky. So you might be working on this for a little bit, then come back and we'll go through this together. Okay, here we go. I also realized I forgot to change these, so I did fix that. You'll notice that did change before and after. Okay, let's count. I've got two carbons plus no other, so I got two carbons. I have sub subscript of six, so I've got six hydrogens, and I have two oxygens. All right, but on this side, this is where I have to add some stuff. I've got one carbon, I've got two oxygens plus one, so I have three oxygens, and my hydrogens, I have two. All right. This one, you probably, if you've really been working on this and you're not just cheating and getting the answers from me, You've probably worked on this for a little while and you might have been a little frustrated. I will not give you this hard of one on the test, but I do want you to see that they're kind of fun. And those of you who like a math challenge, that's really what this is. It's just a little bit of a math riddle. Okay. So, huh. 
my hydrogens are not happy campers right now, are they? Hmm. And I know I'm probably going to want to make that oxygen even. So what am I going to change first? Hmm. Well, it's probably going to be something on the product side. And I could go through and tell you that I probably start with the two here. I'm going to find out it's not enough. I'm going to back out. Then I'm going to go through and figure out, because that messes up a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I could go through and make this a two here, and I could try and put a two here, and that's still not going to work. So I'm going to give you a little hint, because you're probably getting frustrated at this point. Let's start with the fact that on this one, I am going to need four CO2s. So let's see what that does for me. I've got four times one, four carbons. Can fix that one pretty easily with a two, right? Four times two is eight oxygens plus one. Now I'm up to nine. Okay, still haven't completely fixed that. Let's go over here and fix this carbon. What times two is four? It's two. Two times two is four carbons. Okay, but now that messes up my hydrogens. Okay, two times six is twelve hydrogens. Still haven't messed with this oxygen yet, but now I got to fix this hydrogen over here. So two times what is 12? Well, six. Okay. That gives me 12 of those, but how many oxygens do I have now? Well, two times four right here, this times that gives me eight oxygens here plus six times one is six. So that means I have a total of 14 oxygens. Hey, is there a coefficient I can put in front of that O2 that changes a 2 into 14? So 2 times what is 14? If you said 7, you're right. So my answer down here for my coefficients are going to be 2, 7, 4, and 6. Now I'm going to tell you, when I went to balance this myself, I literally started with a 2 here trying to double that up and then I realized that wasn't enough so then I this was a process of elimination even this one took me a couple minutes to get done to get to that point where I got to my final product so if you got frustrated and came and look at the answer don't feel bad it's also why I, I didn't want to take all your time so I didn't go through that whole process but you usually want to use a pencil when you're doing this this is a really good thing because when you're doing this on paper you would want to actually go ahead and erase and change and or write it above it but it's okay to realize that there are some really complicated I've had these in when I was in college where one of these problems to balance it because then you get into polyatomic ions and all that can take you half an hour to balance one it's just a math puzzle I gave you some easier ones this was the one that was a little more challenging if any of this still is not making sense and believe me when I tell you I'm going to use some of the easier ones probably more like this on your test than definitely will not be the last one. If you need help, it's your job to make sure you're either asking me in class, if we're in class, or if we're in distance learning, or you're at home because you were sick. Um, this was always where you need to come and make sure you're getting additional help, whether that's via Zoom or it's in class, wherever we're at. Please always ask for help.